evening, good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us um, to learn more about the upper primary, um, you know, math uh, revision. So we're going to teach you some problem sums and how to do better. All right. So this is going to benefit um, children who are like in primary five and primary six, particularly. Uh, primary four students can also join us, except that probably some questions, um, you know, the concepts or the topic may not have been taught, but it's always good to uh, sit in and, you know, learn more. But um, I definitely give a big thumbs up to all the parents who actually sacrificed their time to be with us today, because it really shows that you care, you care about, um, you know, your child's learning, and we totally want to walk this journey with you, okay, so that um, we always believe that when we walk this journey together with the parents, uh, the children will benefit the most. Okay, next slide, please. Thank you. So a little bit about myself. I'm teacher Faith. Um, yeah, that's what the students call me. Uh, formerly a GEP math teacher because I love math so much, right? Uh, I was, I've been teaching math for the last uh, 20 over years. I had the privilege to set maths paper as well as, of course, uh, mark PSI papers for many, many years as long as I was in the MOE in service. And I truly believe that being a teacher is not what I do, but it's who I am. I like to walk uh, this journey together with my students. I've, I'm a mother of three, so my kids are 16, 13, and 11. I've been through two PSLE years, and I mean, I've been through PSLE years every year, but it's quite different, right, when it's your own kids. So one more PSLE to go next year, and I'm quite done. <laughs> Over to you, Fabian, a little self-introduction. So if you're my students, right, or parents that, you know, you know me, right, just say hi in the chat. I will be love, we will love to hear from you. Huh? So hi, I'm teacher Fabian. Okay, if y'all don't know me, right? Um, I've been teaching for more than hello, Christine. Okay, I've been teaching for more than 15 years. Okay, hello, Regina. Okay, and I specialize in math and science. So I I really love to teach. So at the end of the day, right, uh, I became a teacher because of my passion. Okay. Um, I teach mainly at Salita Mall and Coven, and I always feel that. Teaching, right, or uh, having a lesson has to be fun. Yeah, but at the same time, there, there has to be times where, you know, teaching has to be serious. So we have to balance everything. Yes. Yes, I totally agree. So, yeah, teacher Fabian has this uh, attained that mastery of firmness and funness. I do not know how he does it. Lah, so I have a lot to learn from him. So at the end of the day, I think we are just clowns in the classroom, right? <laughs> Okay, and let's go on. Uh, yeah. Facilitators that let students come to us, enjoy the lessons, and you know, make it a point for them to learn rather than having a boring class. Mm, mm, mm. Agree, agree. Okay, let me show you more. I see a lot of high, high, high. So at Blue Tree, right, we use a soft technique in our teaching. You probably see some of it in our marketing materials. Uh, yeah, Fabian, you can go on to show. Yeah, so how we actually use, uh, we teach, right, is that we tell the kids we are going to search for clues. I'm very sure you are quite, you use similar terms when you are teaching your children, but we are very specific and uh, we deliberately, okay, make it known for the kids. So we will teach them how to read and write. You read a sentence and then we will start to read and write the information, maybe in the form of ratio. Some questions is easier to execute using models. So we'll read and draw, all right? And so it can come in um, various forms of what read and write is. It's like annotating, annotating in our literature notes, annotating when we read comprehension, okay? And then next one will be obtain evidence. Obtain evidence is about uh, linking up information from uh, what we understand. Like you, after you draw the model, you see, oh, there are four boxes there. And then we'll write four units equals to 20. Now, parents take note of this step number two. Step number one is only building confidence. Step number two allows you to earn the first one mark most of the time. In the PSRE marking scheme, there will always be this one mark allocated for a connection shown. 10 units equals to 20. Four units equals to 20. So this is your connection. All right. Remember, one mark for this step. 
And then the third one will be to find one unit. We call it locate the key. So you can see the acronym S-O-L-V-E, where the L, locate the key. Once you can find the key, you are almost uh, one or two steps away from solving the mystery, which is number four. So you just have to read the math question again and just be very careful what you're looking for. Are you looking for shaded or unshaded? You're looking for boys and girls? Run through these steps in your head, all right? And you, and you use this, you can take a screenshot of it. So every time you do a problem sum with your children, just say, don't read the whole question. Read and write, read and write, okay? Connect them, find one unit, read the question and solve it again. I guarantee you that if you keep practicing this, right, you can actually solve each problem sum within five minutes, guaranteed. But it comes with practice, okay? So let me show you more about uh, the math. Okay, so in uh, the tic tac toe that we use uh, to solve uh, some of the concepts, all right, we'll use it for various approaches like um, start change n, uh, quantity times value. Yeah, some schools use before change after, but they mean the same. And then we have like some equal concepts. Okay, two case scenario is some quite difficult questions that school like to test in their school exams. And a lot of fraction ratio percentage, we call it FRP, which also includes some decimals as well because they are related, okay? So we use this technique, right, to put data uh, information into the table, which help us uh, solve the question a lot easy, uh, easier. And uh, Fabian will show you how it works later. And so these are some of the topics that your children will have to learn, okay, from P4 to 5 and 6. So these are a little bit of the add-ons, okay. I have skipped 1 to 3 because uh, those are very fundamental topics um, that will still be covered in primary 4 to 6. Just that at primary 4, you can see introduction of uh, harder concept topics, okay, like factors and multiples. Easy initial stage, but the questions get harder after they cross the mid-year. Then at primary five, you can see ratio, proportion, percentage, angles. The topic got a little quite difficult. And plus the children got to juggle between like juggle. two papers. All right, two papers is actually quite challenging. Uh, there's a paper one, there's a paper two. Paper one without a calculator and paper two with a calculator. So there will be um, quite a test of your child's stamina. And our current primary six students, Okay, parents, you will see that um, your children are actually adjusting. The entire primary five year, they only set for one full paper end of the year, only one. So my primary four parents sitting amongst us, take note as well. Primary five, you don't get to practice a full paper until the end of the year. Then at primary six, suddenly they felt like, wow, there's so much homework to do because one paper is actually like with 17 questions and the other one with 30 questions. It's quite long. Okay, and primary six has less topics to cover because we finish all the topics uh, slightly by early part of July. Okay, June, July, we are like quite done with all the topics. And at this moment, uh, we are not teaching any more new topics because we are done at Blue Tree and we are just going through to prepare them for their prelims and PSLE. And I'm going to analyze a little bit more on the topics. Uh, thank you. So, uh, parents, do you want to take a screenshot of this? Yeah, knowing the categories is important because when you look at the categories, they didn't split into area perimeter or fractions. It is broad categories like this. Numbers, measurement, ratio percentage, data analysis, geometry, algebra, and speed. Okay. Now at primary six, right, you could see the part that I highlighted in yellow. Okay. One more click to that. I think that will actually total up to uh, close to 60%. Okay, so it varies from year to year. Some years, uh, sixty percent. Some years, sixty-three. Uh, but it hasn't crossed seventy, and I don't remember it being below sixty. Actually, all right. Uh, when I set one of the years paper, um, yeah, it is around this range. And the next one to take note of is the geometry. All right, you can see geometry is actually at twelve percent. This is quite high. We are talking about seven to eight. Uh, question. It's okay. Next slide is fine. Right, so analysis of three-year BSLE uh, questions. Now let's show them, yeah. Yeah, we are very keen to know, right? Then you all want to speculate. 
speculate whether will it, uh, what questions should I focus more as I'm preparing my child in the next 10 weeks to PSLE, what should I focus on? Do not skip any topics. You should know um, them well. Uh, rate and speed, you can see, is between 3 to 6%. So, yeah, if, if you don't have to spend like your time practicing 100 questions for that three, five mark question. Uh, rather, you should actually just put more emphasis on whole numbers, measurements, and ratio percentage. Okay. All right, next one. Yeah. So, yeah, so this is a geometry. You can see there are uh, a lot of questions being tested in uh, the topics like uh, paper one, there are nine questions and paper two, eh, is that 14 questions? I think 14 marks, nine marks and 14 marks. So quite, uh, quite a high percentage, 23%. Okay, so there was quite a range lah, because of the transition uh, from COVID into, you know, post-COVID. So you can see that, um, place more emphasis on this if your child is not so good at it. Okay, all right, let's take a look at the next one. Over to you. Okay. That's why we Hello, have everyone. <laughs> yeah, thank you, teacher, Faith. Uh, so in case you're wondering, right, this is actually, I haven't done this in a, quite a while. So all my parents, students who are here to kind of support, thank you all so much. Huh? So I'm going to, um, students, please take note. Uh, some of this question I actually covered before. Parents, what you can do is, uh, when I go through all this, then you are, if you're my regular, and then you can ask me, I can send you some of the questions. Or if, let's say, you're interested, you can message us, then we will provide some of the questions for you uh, that I'm going through today, so you can go through with your child. So um, I actually selected some of the questions uh, with guidance of Teacher Faith, so that we can help you uh, have this session to help you, yeah, to help you go through some of the questions that we feel that is challenging. At the same time, it will be very helpful. So let's look at this question. So we have a rhombus. Like my students here, do you all know what's a rhombus or not? Anybody can type in the chat what is a rhombus. I know rhombus is very easy to explain, right? Anybody knows? <clears throat> you all can type. So I like my session to be interactive. So, you know, don't be shy. Just type whatever you think. You can eat. Ah, oh, thank you so much for equal sides. Yes. So a rhombus, right, is actually, I always tell my students, right, a tilted square. So it's like all the sides are equal, So but it's tilted such a way. There are some schools, right, that even call it a, a, a kite, diamond. So there are many names for it, okay? So let's interpret this question. So we have something else that's inside the rhombus. We have an equilateral. Anybody knows what's an equilateral? Wow, thank you so much for participating. I'm really, I'm actually very happy and very grateful that you guys came to help me. Thank you so much, everyone. Ah, thank you. So all angles is 60 degrees. So let's see. So do you notice what I did? I put the lines there. So remember, writing down, uh, like what teacher Faith says, our blue tree uh, soft technique. So read and write. So I'm doing the same thing as I teach. I read and then I write. So I indicate that I have a equilateral. Next, I'm going to do this. So I, everything I put 60. Okay, then I read the next sentence. But the information is given. Ah, 108. Then I move on to see hmm, what can I find. So in case you are wondering, opposite side of the rhombus is always equal. So I'm going to do this. So by doing this, right, I'm able to find angle BCE. So BCE is 48. Because opposite sides, I repeat, of a rhombus is always the same. Now, once I find this, found this 48, what other information do you think I can find? How do you think I should proceed with this question? You see, the way I teach my students is, right, I, I believe in building thinkers. So, you know, uh, I don't like to give answers. I feel that students need to be able to understand what's going on. Ah, the soft technique, yes. So, as you continue reading, you will be able to... You remember the first question I asked you? Anybody remember the first question I asked before I started the question? Yes, very good. I asked you all, what is a rhombus, right? So do you realize that? Ah, correct. Do you realize that this line BC, right? Line BC, uh, okay, let me annotate a bit. Do you realize that this line BC is actually equals to DC? And because of that, eh, what do we know? We know that we have a isosceles triangle. Ah, very good. 
And this is this this question, right? This is the part that students they don't know how to continue because once they get the forty eight, they don't know what to do. So this is the part you need to be able to identify a hidden shape or a hidden rule, which is the isosceles triangle. Very good. Oh, good job. Okay. So after that, what do I do? I do this. I'm able to find that two sixty six, and then what I do? Yes, very good. Then now I can solve the question. Okay, so the answer will be 126. How I know? 60 plus 66. You can see from the question. Thank you very much. I like all your participation. This is how I like my lesson. Thank you so much, parents. Thank you so much, students. Good job. Okay, let's, shall we move on? Do y'all need to take a screenshot? You know, I move on. I move on, okay? Okay, let's move on to the next question. Here is the second question that I have prepared for you. Let's take some time to interpret the question. So, what do we have here? We have a figure, okay? Now, we have two rectangles, correct? And then we know that A, BF is equals to D, BE is equals to BD. Yeah, this is actually a past PSLE question, yes. And then we have BD equal FD, FE equal ED. Oh my gosh, after looking at the numbers, I'm also very confused. So, what do you think I will do? We, we said this from the start. Let's apply the soft technique. Aha! Uh -huh. Wait, how did teacher Faber know that there is a equilateral? Exactly, read and write. Because I know that there is three equal lines. The three equal lines, okay, as you can see, let me note it. We will have BF, you have BD, and you have FD. These three lines actually mix and equilateral, Ta-da! And you are one step closer to the answer. Let's move on, okay? Then what do I do next? Then you realize that, eh? I can divide by two, correct? Yeah, correct. But the isosceles will come later because the isosceles, right? First step, you go and divide by two first. Uh, sorry, you need to divide by two, why? Because you need to find this to figure out that, eh? I actually have an isosceles. So this isosceles, right, is also based on the information given, which is triangle F B triangle F B E is an equilateral. Ah, uh, sorry, it's an isosceles, and triangle E B D is also isosceles. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone. Oh, I like your responses. Fantastic. This is very interesting. I'm having so much fun. All right, so after I've done this, right, I can actually solve the first answer, which is ABF. And what is ABF? It is 60 degrees. How do I know? I take 90 degrees. And the 90 degree is here. This is 90 degrees. So I take the 90 degree. I minus the 30 degree. I will have 60. Yeah? Thank you so much. I love your responses. All right, so I have solved the first part. Let's move on to the second part. How do I find GFE? That's where the isosceles triangle comes in, correct? Ah, thank you for your responses. So after that, I put in my information and I realized that hey, I have the isosceles triangle that I mentioned. And then I use the method that we did previously. I minus and divide by 2, I 75. So what have I found? Now, I have found that hmm, the angle we are looking for is GFE. I found that BFE is 75. So final step is minus one. Okay. And where do I get the 60 from? Do y'all know where to get the 60 from? Anybody knows where I get the 60 degree? Why I 75 minus 60? Where did the 60 come from? Anyone knows? Yes, correct. Very good. Wow, well done. It came from the equilateral. And where did I identify it? That was the first thing that I found out. You understand? Yes, very good. That was the first thing that I found. So after I've got all this information, I'm able to solve. So that's why the soft technique uh, is very important. So when you do step by step, not um, some of the steps may be not necessary, but you realize that because of what we have been taught in school, right? All the steps make sense. And it leads from one to another. And that's where all your points start coming in, all your marks. So all the steps, right, that leads to the final answer, that's where all your marks come from, your method marks and your answer marks. Ah, thank you so much. Please take a screenshot if you need to. Okay, okay.
Okay, are y'all ready? Can we move on? Uh, can we move on to the next question? Okay, yeah, thank you so much. So I have actually finished right with my angles question. I'm going to move on to the next one, which I actually covered in class before. Uh -huh. In fact, I did it just recently only. Let's read the question. There, are, there were 2,000 pupils in Ace Primary School in 2010. In 2011, the number of girls increased by 40% to 1,204, while the number of boys left the school by a certain percentage. As a result, the number of pupils from 2010 to 2011 decreased by 100%. How many boys left the school? Okay, with this question, right, I want to share something. You all notice that I just read through everything. Yeah, I didn't really uh, do like uh, what we said earlier, like, like read like uh, this uh, soft technique, read and write, right? I didn't do that. Why? Because I am trying to understand what the question wants. So this is a very good technique as well. Before you, yes, correct, Miss eating. good job. So before you start, right? Okay, before you start, it's good to understand what the question is really, uh, really wants. Now, I'm going to use, the reason why I chose this question, right, is I want to demonstrate how you do the tic-tac-toe or the starts change end technique. That is the reason why I chose this question because it looks very complicated. To tell you the truth, right, the first time I see this question, I also don't know what to do. So, yes, very good. You can get all this information, but don't you feel that after doing all this, it's very confusing? Like, you don't know which information you need. So, this is where the tic-tac-toe box comes in. So, what we have here, yes. Yeah, so I understand you guys know how to do. So, the reason for covering this question is to demonstrate the tic-tac-toe uh, method to show how you put in the information and you don't get confused. Students have a uh, tendency, right, to just write the steps down. But later, you reach a certain step, you're like, what should I do next? You get lost. So the tic-tac-toe is to guide you, use it as a compass, as a guide, so that you know what you're doing and you don't get lost. So now I have put out the tic-tac-toe already. So let's, now is where you do the step one and uh, do the uh, read and write technique. So for my first step, you read the question, you will have 2,000, okay? And then this increased by 40%. So I put down the 2,000 first. That's the start. So you transfer the information line by line. So you don't get confused. Okay. After that, you move on to the next step, which is the increase by 40%, which means that 140% is 1,204. Right? Then let's work backwards. I find 100%. 100% is 860. And where is it? See, the whole... I really like this method a lot. Why? So I'm not lost. I know that the 860, right, actually belong to the end. Uh, yes, Denise, very good. Thank you so much. That's a fantastic question. Uh, the answer is yes, there is enough time. Because, right, I'm not going to do any extra working. All my working is inside my tic-tac-toe box. All my working is inside. So I don't get confused. That it, because, right, instead of doing your workings everywhere, I'm putting everything inside a box. So it's literally using your time to do the question. It's not something you do extra on the outside. It is you are doing the question, but you are making it such that you know what you're doing. So the next step, the next line, right, is to transfer the 860, okay, which is the girls, right, at the beginning. So in other words, right, the 1204 is actually the girls at the end. So what I did there, I did my working there, yeah, I did my working there to show that the 860 is the girls at the start, which is in which year? Do you realize that one look, you know that the 860 belongs to the 2010 year, and then the 1204 belongs to the 2011 year? Then after that, the next step is to read the question, which is the last information, the 1000, uh, 100, sorry, the 100. Then I put down my information. Now, I do, do you realize that there is no need to refer to the questions anymore? Yeah, you can just now refer to the chart. Yeah, the tic-tac-toe chart. You can try. I will give you some time. I will slow down a little bit. Because um, as you all do, right, I can share a bit. I feel that this method is very good because I have students, right, they get, they, they can do every step. But when they got all the numbers out, right, they don't know what to do. They got lost. 
And sometimes students tend not to do the annotation. So this everything, right, will give you a very clear picture. Uh, it's something like mind mapping, if you know science, right? So you put everything down so you're very clear. So now there's no need to read the question anymore. All the information is there. You just fill in the blanks. Ta-da! And then you work backwards. You see, from here, right, I don't need to read the question. I just need to fill in the empty boxes. And do you realize that you already got the answer? Uh, um, the tic-tac-toe method, right, can be used for any question that basically uses ratio percentage fraction. Yeah, basically, uh, most of it. Uh, okay, of course, area and perimeter, sometimes you can't, some, but there are times that you can. As long as it has a ratio, it has fraction, um, most of the time, it can be applied. So it all comes down to what your child is familiar with. But if you're not familiar, please do not try. I mean, attempt, practice, then do it. Like for example, if I have a student who just learned it in one lesson, I won't recommend them to try because it requires a lot of practice. So I have students who did this for six months and then they finally understood. So that's why you need time. Yeah, it's not, this is not a one-trick pony. It's not something you learn today, you'll know tomorrow. You need a lot of practice, a lot of experience. Yeah, I, the most important word here is experience. Mm. Okay, and do you realize that I didn't do any extra working? Everything is done. Everything is done. So I got all my answers just like that. So I just have to put in the answer as 444 at the bottom. That's all. So that's the reason why I chose this question because I felt that complicated questions, um, students tend to feel very like uh, challenging because they don't know what to do. But after putting all the information down, it's actually simple. Okay, and uh, yes, as long as the working are shown, right, all marks will be awarded. Yes, and it's very neat and tidy. Yes. Okay, I'm going to move on to the next question. If you all got anything, please type in the chat. I will respond or, you know, uh, teacher Faye or myself or anyone, we will try to answer your question. All right, here comes the next question. Okay, let's read the question. You can take a screenshot. Yeah, you can take a screenshot. This question, right, I purposely had it done this way. I didn't um, so-called hide all the answers. I purposely did it this way because this question, I want to show two methods. So let's read the question first. So there were this amount of members in the club. So 740 members uh, last year. This year, the male reduced by 10% and then the female reduced by 5%. Uh, okay. If there were as many male members as female members. Do you see what I did there? I put hints. All right. Now, uh, I wanted to showcase some very important thing for this question that students please highlight and uh, highlight or underline. You need to figure out what is the heuristic method. Okay. Can y'all help me a bit here? By looking at the question, do you see what I underline? The, I underline... Um, if there were as many male and female, right? what heuristic method do you think this question is about? If there is the same number of men, what do you think it is? The heuristic method. What do you think is a heuristic method? So I give you like maybe like a few seconds to type. Uh, okay, I see equal fractions. Do you think it's equal fractions? Yeah, I know the working is equal fractions, but is it equal fractions? Uh, so when you have two things that are the same, is it equal fraction or is it something else? So having lessons, right, or coming for class, right, it's very important to think. We build thinkers. So think, think through. Ah, uh, percentage, very good. Ah, uh, yes, yes. You can use calculator for all the questions. All the questions are calcular, uh, calculator-based questions. Yes, yes, yes. All paper two, like, in other words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All can use calculators, yes. Okay, so actually, right, I teach, if you all remember, I teach my students this. You only know that it's equal fraction because I wrote that. But if you don't know, right, the first thing you do is, what do you know? Equal ending. Yes. So I was actually looking for the word equal ending. Equal ending means, right, they have the same number at the end. So this is another heuristic, equal beginning and equal ending. You can do model drawing. In other words, 
So, and because uh, I wanted to showcase this because um, it's actually equal ending, but because this is the, they give the percentage is the same, you can actually make the numerator the same. And what is the numerator? Let's look at the question now. So, the first thing I did, right, if you see, is to try, uh, find out how many percent of the male and how many percent of the female is left, and I convert to fraction. Oh yeah, I forgot to say this. The percentage, right, always convert to fraction. Uh, it's easier to make into ratio later on. Okay? Okay, so let's see. So when I have 90 over 100 male, it's equals to 95 over 100 female. Then the next step, right, is something that students don't really remember. They like to cross multiply here. Don't do that. Always simplify first. After you simplify already, right, you realize that the number is smaller and it's easier. Even with a calculator, smaller numbers is easier to calculate. Trust me. Okay? Yeah. I've been teaching for many years. <laughs> okay, can, can, can everyone? Okay, okay, that's fine. Okay, after I made it simplified, I realized that 9 over 10 male and 19 over 20 female, correct? Then what I do now is I times 9 and I times, uh, sorry, I times 19 and I times 9. Then I'll get 171 and 171 on both sides. Then you always ask this question, teacher, so you know how you get 171? Students always ask me this question. Then I tell them, you can do this thing called cross multiply. Why? Because 9 times 19 is equals to 19 times 9. You see? Or 1 times 2 equals 2 times 1. 3 times 4 equals 4 times 3. It's the same. So when you do that, you will ensure that the top is 171. But there is, I need to do a disclaimer. Uh, if you want to do that, right? Please make sure the numbers in the simplest form. If not, can you imagine you take 90 times 95, how big your number will be? And you'll be very confused later on. So always simplify it first. So after that, when I have this information, the denominator is the total. Then you notice that 190 plus 180 is 370 units, right? And this, what is the information I haven't used yet? Students and parents, what information I haven't used yet? And the missing information is, I haven't used yet, is the, is the total. The 740, correct? After that, uh, according to the soft technique, you see, I always go back to the soft technique. So I'm now at the locate the key. The key is one unit. And one unit is 740 divided by 370. I have two up. So after I know that, I have just read the question again and then solve the question now. The members in the club now is 170 times two times two or 170 times four. Ah, oh, sorry, 171 times 4. How do I know that? Yes, how do I know that? It's because 100, there is two 171. And then every unit is 2. So I 171 plus 171, I will get 3, 4, 2. And then I mean, I times 2 because every unit is 2. And that's how I get the answer. So do you realize it doesn't seem that difficult? Once you find the heuristic method, that's why I always tell my students, always, always identify the heuristic method. And it falls under soft technique, uh, the L, S, sorry, the O, uh, S-O-L-V-E, the O. Observe and link. Uh, it comes with practice. Uh, it comes with practice. Uh, when you look at a question, you don't know what method. That's why you need to underline and highlight. No? So by looking at, you do see what I underline? I underline uh, as many male and female, right? That sentence itself tells me that it is equal ending. So I can do model or in this case, right, I know that it's equal fraction because the fraction is the, the, the so-called the number of people is the same. Not the fraction is the same. Huh? It's the number of people is the same. What method? Of, oh, it comes with practice. Um, okay, I have something to say. For math, heuristic method. Okay, there is no fixed method for math. I... That is why I want to showcase this question. There is no fixed method. You can have multiple methods. You, you, you may say that, I don't know the, the method you're using, teacher. It's okay, because I'm going to show you a second, a second method. Sorry, do you all need to take a screenshot of this? If not, I move on, okay? Can I? Yeah, can, can. I'll go back later. At the end, right, I, I will stay back for a while, show you some of the questions. Okay, don't worry. It's fine. Okay, huh? uh, sorry, what do you mean by no? It means that do you can I move on or no? Uh, can you give uh, show the previous slide? I think the parent wants to see uh, the 
You this mean one. this one? I think this one. They missed ah, the screenshot. Can, can. No worries. So sorry. Yeah. When, when teachers teach, right, we get very excited. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I get very excited. Yeah. Am I too fast? So the face-to-face -face interaction at Blue Tree uh, helps a lot because, you know, very quickly we could identify uh, which students need a bit more assistance, which one uh, are more confident to write and which one needs more, um, you know, uh, what support. <laughs> You know, you know what I mean? Yeah, so I will strongly encourage that if students need more help building confidence, you should opt for physical uh, setting. Okay. Oh, okay. Not too fast, but it's the first time look at the new things need time to think. Oh. Okay, so maybe we give them a while to read the question because they are so used to reading first sentence to the last sentence. They are not used to reading read and write, right? <laughs> Yeah, parents will try the read and write together and you'll know how powerful it is. So basically, uh, the question that I've selected today will showcase Nutri's soft technique plus also a certain um, concepts that I feel that students are, are you know, making errors in like what I've shown, like the tic-tac-toe, and um, also the different method. It's okay not to know what method is fine. But at the end of the day, you just need to figure it out. There are many methods. There is no one answer to everything. There are many ways, but it all comes down to your practice. Uh, I always tell my students, there is no fixed method. Just try your best and then try to figure it out. Okay. But important thing is you must have the basic and foundation. Without the basic, right, you cannot even start. So if you keep saying that you don't know what method to use, right? it means that you never tried the different heuristics or you don't even know what heuristics are and that you need to figure out. Mm. Ken? Okay, I'm going to move on. Yeah, practice makes perfect. I love that sentence. Yeah. Okay, so like what I said, that is, it's okay not to know one method. So I'm going to demonstrate a second method. Aha! You see, I prepared already. I know. So I prepared a second method for you. This second method, right, is using the... Uh, okay, first off, before I do the method, right, I read and write first. I write down that 90% and I write down 95% in fraction form. Okay, so that's what I do first. So that I write that down. Then after that, I look at the question. Then I ponder and think, what should I do next? Now, what do you think I do next? You see, I'm going to demonstrate if you don't know what method to use, right? This is what I always do. I always look at the numbers and I think, what can I do next? So what I do is this. I make the denominator the same. Hey, but why? Le? Why do you make the denominator the same? Le? But the, they say equal ending, not equal beginning. What? Teacher Fabian, why you do that for what? Because I want to use tic-tac-toe. You see? So what I did is this. Step one. I go and uh, I from the 18 over 20 and the 19 over 20, I start with 20 units. In other words, at the previous year, every one is 20 units, one is 20 parts. The reason why I use parts is because they are not the same. They are different, two different set of numbers. So I use this 20 as a guide. Okay, So I have 20 units and 20 parts. Then I did not fill in the change. I just go straight to the end. At the end, I have 18 units for the male and then 19 parts for the female. Then I, after I got this information, I, pa, 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 I fill up my tic-tac-toe chart. And this is the information. Okay, yes, correct. You, by read and write, is for confidence building. It's okay, just try. You can do it. Okay, you can do it. Practice makes perfect. All right, so after I've gotten this, I got this information. The most important sentence that I said earlier, right, is this one. There was as many male and female. Which means that this and this, they are the same number in terms of the value itself. Which means the number of male and the number of female for this 18U and 19P is the same. Okay, get it? So you notice how I'm doing here? I, I'm doing in real time how you do this question. Okay, so since I know that, then here's my next step. I realized that 18U is equal to 19P. And because 18U is equals to 19P, right, it means that one unit is 19 and then one chart is 18. He said, teacher, how you know that? 
Do you remember what I said earlier? Do you remember this part here? I said this uh, previous slide. Do you remember I said this? <clears throat> How do I make 9 become 171? How do I make 19 become 171? I cross multiply, right? So I'm doing the same thing. Because 18 times 19 is the same as 19 times 18. They are the same. So when you take 18 unit times 19, it's the same as take 19 parts times 18. Okay? So once you have that, you can literally solve the question already. Okay? And you, sorry. Oops. Okay? So after that, once you do that, let's uh, link the information. You realize that 20 units plus 20p, okay, is equals to 740. Then you go and multiply. You will find out that uh, when you take 18 units times 19 plus 19 times 18, which is literally 171 times 2 plus 171 times 2, you will get 684. Just like that. Okay? Do you need to take a screenshot or something? Or am I too fast? Uh, okay? Yeah. So I let y'all read. Uh, it's the same question, uh, so shouldn't take that long, right? Yeah, yeah. Any question, please start in the chat, please. Uh, <laughs> yeah, math is uh, oh thank you so much. Math, right? Is actually um is is actually very useful in life. Math is everywhere. Teacher Faith always like to share about her. Uh, everything she sees, right, is all, all math. Yeah, uh, she will share more later. <laughs> yes, you need math in many occupations. All right, I'm going to move on. Now, the next question looks interesting. Okay, um, the recent uh, WA, uh, which is uh, WA1 or WA2, right, recent WA, for certain schools, there was a few schools mentioned uh, that they actually have a similar question like this. Uh, hello, Alex. Uh, okay, how do I know? You have to do read and write. So you notice for the previous question, what I did is, I won't know what matter also. I really don't know. So the only thing I know is to read and write, transfer the information down. Then until I get all the information down on the paper already, right? Then I look, then I figure out what is the heuristic method. Yeah, I also cannot figure it out until I have all my information down in the chart, in the model, and then I, which is the soft technique which is the SO. So after I have figured it out, uh, transfer my information, then I applied the observe and linked. So the linking is where the heuristic comes in. No? Yeah, so it, it comes with experience. So there is a, a few that we teach here in Blue Tree. Of course, school teach differently, but the concept is the same, but just that they use a different name. So that's why I always tell my students, there's no fixed method. Yeah, 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 there's no fixed method. Okay, okay, let's move on. So this question, um, let's give you some time to think, okay? The figure shows a rectangle. The rectangle is PQ, RS. A symmetrical figure in the rectangle is made out of three semicircle and two quarter circle. Hmm, okay. Yeah, there are some schools, right? They like to call this question the dog years question. You realize, right, it looks like a dog. You know, a face of a dog, right? Uh, do you realize that it looks like a face of a dog with the years there? Okay, so this question was in the recent WA for a certain school. Uh, the WA I mentioned was before the June holidays. Okay, so the students, right? Actually, uh, some of my students actually didn't know what to do. Okay, and certain school wasn't in WA. This was inside in their practice paper. Yeah, okay. So what happened is that they don't know what to do. Why? The problem is, teacher, I don't know. I cannot find this. They can't find this. They cannot find the radius for this quarter. They're like, I don't know how. No information. Then I even have people telling me, ah, this question is wrong. Why? Missing information. No, there is no missing information. All the information is there. There is no missing information. Yeah, you know, student type to like, oh, question wrong. Something, uh, teacher must have uh, missed out something. There is nothing wrong with this question. Yeah, there's totally nothing wrong. It's perfectly fine. So how do we do it? Okay, come, let's read the question. Uh, okay, um, okay. Q, U, which is Q and U, if you realize. Uh, Q, U is the, 
it's over here. This is QU, it's 30. And then UR, where's UR? UR is 22. Yes, correct. Yeah, that, that is what I was trying to say. But the thing is, it's there. You just have to find it. Okay, it's there. You have to find it. There is no missing information. Okay, there is, I repeat again, uh, there is no missing information. All right, let's continue. So this is what I will do first because I also don't know what to do. So I will write down what I see. And I see this. Hey, I see two semicircles. And which two semicircles am I referring to? I'm referring to this semicircle. And I'm referring to this semicircle. Ah, you, I like the, oh my gosh. Thank you so much. You really made my day. I really love it when the students, you know, after a long day of teaching, they'll put, oh, I get it. I understand. I'm so happy. Yeah, I'm so proud. Okay, I'm so proud. Thank you so much. Okay, so you realize, right, there is two semicircles. Okay, these two semicircles is not the same. Now, so you need to use that to find your missing information. Uh, okay, you need to use that to find, yeah, it, it looks complicated. It is not complicated. Yeah, you just, uh, sometime, right, uh, diff two different color pens actually help to solve the question. So, like I did earlier, let me do again. Uh. You have one semicircle and two semicircle. These two semicircle is not the same. They are two different sizes. Yeah. Then, you, after I found this already, right, I can I think it's next. What is the, my next step? My next step is this. I write down what I know. You see? Read and write. Eh? You notice that I keep doing read and write, read and write, read and write. Because this is how useful it is. After that, hey, but I, actually I missed out something. I should have put different semicircle. So I have two sem semicircle. One is 60. The other one I should have put medium instead of large. Lah, okay? But it's fine. So one of it is 60 in diameter. The other one is 44 in diameter. With this information, students and parents, can you find the missing information, which is the small quarter there? Can you, do you think you can find the radius now? Can right? How do I find the radius? What is diameter? Uh, oh, for P5 students, sorry, I apologize. I forgot there's P5 students and P4 students here. Uh, diameter is the, you know, a circle, right? Okay. So a diameter is when you have a circle. Let me do it for you. Yeah, you have a circle and the diameter is the line that cuts across directly through the center of the circle. Yeah, thank you so much. I love the responses. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes. Uh, no, it's not a pokeball. Uh. It's not a pokeball, okay? So, <laughs> it's not a pokeball. Okay, so this is just the line that cuts past the center of the circle and we call that the diameter. The radius is half of it. Okay? The radius is half of it. Why 22 times 2 isn't it? No, it's not 22. Yeah. Okay, the, re the what I'm referring to, right? What I'm referring to is this one. So, uh, what happened is from here to here, you know that it is 60. From here to here, we know that it's 22. Oh, wait. Hey, sorry, not 22. Sorry, yeah. It's 44. Ah, found it. Correct, it is 16. And this is the thing about area of circle. Okay, this is more for P6s. Uh, sorry, the P5 and P4 students. This is more for circle. And for parents who are like P4, uh, P4 parents with P4 students, P4 students, right? This is what you need to uh, look out for when you reach uh, this uh, P6. These are some of the area of circle is a very important topic. Yeah, and, and it's not difficult to say. It's just you need to find the pattern. You need to find the hidden shapes. And you realize that, hmm, there is a missing length, right? What is the missing length? Very good. Yo, good job. The missing length is this, lor. You don't find us, ah? Hey, I found it. I found the radius. I found it. And I can solve the question now. Let's find PQ. PQ is 76. Easy, right? Yes? Any question? Please type. <laughs> I hope you guys are having fun. I am. Thank you so much. Okay? Ah, so I have found my first answer. Thank you so much. 
Yes, correct. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, your replies really makes my day. You know, having a long day at work and um, all your re uh, replies, right, made me feel very happy. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so glad. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Don't worry. You no, know, no, no. Nobody here is, um, nobody here is, you know, it is not, not intelligent. We are all learning. We are going, we are all, you know, uh, going through a learning process. Yeah. Very good, very good. Okay. Can I, can I, can I? Thank you so much. Okay. All right. So once you figure it out, we can solve the second part of the question. Yeah. We can solve the second part of the question. And what is the second part? Here's the second question. I want the perimeter of the shaded part, uh, which is the dog year. So how do we find the perimeter of the shaded part? Very simple, right? Okay, this is what we're going to do. First, we're going to find the curve part, the blue part, and the uh, green part. Now, do you notice that the blue part here, right? They are the same. So the blue part by the green part actually make one semicircle. Yeah. Then after that, you have the perimeter, uh, part, okay, which is using the formula. This is more for the P6 students, which is uh, half pi D. Okay, sorry, it should be half, uh, not 12. Uh. It's half. Uh. There's a line missing. This should be half. Okay, and after that, ah, thank you. Oh, so good. Yes, then after that, uh, after that, we find the, uh, use the radius of the smaller one. We find the curve part. And then we are able to add everything and solve the question. Thank you so much. Please take a picture of this uh, question if you need to. Okay, take, take a picture and then after the lesson, you all can look through it. Because I need to, due to time, I also want to finish the question soon. Due to time, right? Yeah, I need to move on to the next part, the last question. Then teacher Faith can, and I can for, continue and finish up the lesson. We do not want to take up too much of your time. Can, can, can. All right, take a screenshot, please. Take a screenshot, please. Okay, I'm going to move on in five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, and let's go. Okay, I chose this question in particular. Why? Because I always feel that students have problem with this type of question where you need to stack things inside a box. Yeah, I don't know why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because some students have this uh, very... Uh, don't have this spatial view, um, like they cannot visualize a uh, question. So visualizing question, right? Yes, correct, volume question. So this question visualizing is very important. So, but sometimes there's actually not really a need to visualize. You can actually just draw it out. So this is what I mean. Okay. No problem. Okay. So this is what I mean. First, let's read. You have eight identical cubes. In other words, right? Oh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll do it later. Okay, later at the end, right? Uh, I will go back to the question. You all can switch out, okay? I need to move on already. Thank you so much. All right, let's move on. So eight large cubes means that everything only got eight cubes. Large one. The small one, I don't know. Okay? And everything was filled up very, very, very nicely until it fills up to the brim. Now, the question, the first one is, uh, how many cubes does Jack have? So this is what I'm going to do. I read and write first. Ah, I know that two large cubes and I know that eh, the picture has a... Eh, oh yeah, one more information. Students forget. The picture has information. Please always learn to annotate. The picture has information. Students tend to forget that. Oh, picture got information. Right? Yes. Yeah, there will be the, the... We will upload the video on YouTube. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So this information is very important. Why? If you look from the side, yeah, from the side, which is uh, any of the sides, right? Okay, you realize that the two large is the same as three small cubes. Then, if you don't know, never mind. Just draw it out. See what I did? I draw it out for you. See, I draw it out for you. Yeah, I drew it out for you nicely. Okay, so what I meant by two, these two large ones is equals to three small ones like that. See, they are exactly the same. Uh, for every two, three is the same. That's what it means. Okay? That's what it means. After I know that already, what do you think I will do next? What do you think I will do? Thank you! Oh my gosh! Thank you so much, Joey. Thank you so much. Okay, after I know that, what do you think I will do next? Okay, I need to match the question. 
Now, um, do you realize that there is eight large cubes, right? So what we do, you realize that every row has two. So I take eight divided by two, I have four, right? So I make my large become four. Why? Like I said, when you stack it up, there's a total of eight, right? The base itself have two. So which means it's two, four, six, eight. So four, eight divided by two is four. So once I know this four, I make the large become four, which means that the equivalent side, my small huh, has to be six, huh? okay? Then after I know this, uh, okay, after I know that, I go and take six times two times three. I know I, I'll give you some time to think. Why did I take six times two and three? Come from what? Okay. Ultimately, we forgot that this is a volume question. <laughs> this is a volume question. So the six, two, and three is actually the length, base, and height. Yeah, it's the length, base, and height. The breadth is two cubes. The length is three cubes. And then the height is six cubes. And all this is small cubes. Huh? Everything, I make it everything small cubes. In other words, everything is now small cubes. And once, uh, only the small cubes, sorry. I'm referring only the small cube side. The, there's large and small. Okay? So I, the tower I'm talking about is purely small cubes. I did not include the large cubes. Okay? This is only small cubes. Um, okay, what do I mean? Okay, so this question here, right, is cut into two parts. Two parts. Two parts, huh? Imagine there's a piece of paper in the middle. Okay, this whole part, right, is your large cubes. This whole part is your small cubes. So there's a total of eight cubes on this side, the eight large cubes. So how many small cubes do I need such that I have uh, this, uh, my small cubes, right? can match the eight large cubes. And the answer is um, two by three by six. So I'm only referring to this part here, this cuboid. This cuboid can take how many small cubes, which is two, three, six. So six times two times three. Lor. That's what I meant. Uh, six is because I found it. Eh? Six is here. Yeah, okay. Can I? Okay. So after I gotten this ready, after I gotten this ready, I can solve the question. Okay, I'm oh, sorry. I already solved the question. So the answer for A is actually 36. Can, 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 can? 36, huh? Okay. Um, let's move on. I will stay it later if you all need to do screenshot. Okay, I need to move on. All right. So this one, right, I need to go a bit quicker. All right. Thank you so much. Okay, so the volume is given. Then I want to highlight this important thing that I always teach my student. Off means multiply, which means that the total volume of the eight cubes, right, is actually equals to the volume of the whole box times three over seven. Yeah, which means, right, yes, correct. Four over seven is the small cube. Very good. So I move on. Some of you already got the answer already. So when I take 4032 or 4032 times 4 over 7, I actually get the volume of the small cube. Yes. Then when I cube root it, right, I will have the side. Oh, and that's my answer already. Oh. Yeah. Okay. You all can screenshot this question. Yeah. And I am finished with all the questions that I have prepared. I really hope you all enjoy it. Uh, no, that's not 3D. That one is cube root. Uh, for primary 5 and 6, right? Uh, primary 5, sorry. Uh, no, primary 5 can. We actually have this thing called cube root, which is the three numbers. Uh, in, the, in this question, is 4 times 4 times 4 is 36. Mm. Did you fail? I'm done. Good job. You did a great, great job. <laughs> I, I love the comments from everyone. It's so encouraging. Yes, yes, mm. yes. Amazing, amazing. And you guys survived. <laughs> Wait, let me... Oh, wrong one. Let me just um, toggle this for you first. Someone wanted the previous slide. Was it this one that you need? The one on circles? Because later on, there'll be like quite quite a lot of... Clap, 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 teacher Fabian. Yes, yes, yes. I totally agree. Parents, you need to take a photo of this. Okay, you can take a photo of this first. Okay, three, two, one. 
Okay, then I'll go on to uh, the part two of this. <laughs> Teacher Fabian has spoken for many, many hours today. <laughs> All right, so over here, right, just now, Teacher Fabian said something like a cube root, okay? So if you can look at all the numbers here. Yes, and thank you very much. And before I ask a question, somebody already said, yes, thank you very much. I could see like familiar names. Yes, these are all called square numbers. So can you recognize square numbers? And same thing, you know, how do I know when I look at this question, how to do it? How do these children look at these numbers and know that they are square numbers? It's all about being familiar. How to be familiar? Break this make perfect. All right. So memorizing our square numbers is definitely a must, must to do. We have gone past a stage of 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. You are done with that already. So what the next level upper primary students need to do is to memorize square numbers. All right. So when they are very familiar with square numbers, they see it, they can recognize it. They will immediately know what to do in terms of execution and be able to do like uh, what goes on and what's the next step after this, okay? So parents really uh, put in more effort. If you have P4 sitting amongst us, please start young, all right? They already know square numbers since uh, P3, but you know, it's all taught in just like uh, on its own. Like what is two times two? What is three times three? If you can go on to recite 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, then you know that they are very, very familiar with these numbers, all right? As you move on to higher level, then you, at primary five and primary six, you deal with uh, volume, uh, like in our previous question. When you see the number 64, right, the children actually want to do eight times eight. Th then you have to be very, very mindful. This is a cube. It's a 3D object. It's not eight times eight. It's four times four times four. So that is why the size is 4 cm and not 8 cm. So the numbers here are all cube numbers, all right? Yeah, not cute at all because the numbers are huge. You just keep multiplying and they get bigger and bigger. And it's so important that your children actually memorize them. Memorize 1 to 10 is good enough. For all those that are in my class, um, I make them memorize um, some up to 11. And those uh, higher ability kids, I can push them to memorize up to 12 or 13, okay? But for our exams, uh, 1 to 10 cube numbers is enough. Okay, so these are the cube numbers. All right. Okay, so teacher Fabian shared so a couple of uh, problem sums, and they really come in uh, various types of heuristics. You probably have seen these, all right, being listed somewhere, either in the, the school heuristic booklets or some assessment books, or you have been looking at the internet, and then there are so much information. Yeah, really, there's really a lot, a lot, a lot. So if you're going to say that, oh, uh, PSLA is coming, uh, four weeks before, let's enroll into a, a program and then let's make them learn everything here. Well, I'm just listing a few <laughs> and it takes time to attain mastery. So always start, um, you know, um, revision, um, your, your learning, everything starts early so that you have time to uh, internalize the information. You, you, you get it? Yeah, like imagine tomorrow you're going to uh, invite uh, visitors to your house. And then today you're trying to master how to cook a curry, uh, a uh, uh, mutton lamb chop and uh, prepare, you know, like you, you want to learn so many big dishes 24 hours before something. Yeah, you, you're going to panic, right? So you need time to attain mastery as well. And what more children, they need a lot more time to stay calm, to learn better. So uh, these are some of the good uh, comp uh, testimonial given by students. All right. Uh, it takes time. All right, uh, Kaden, Kaden, I think you and I both taught Kaden before. Kaden uh, was with us and it's over a period of time, you can see that there's some consistency in the work. And very often we hear parents say, oh, yeah, P3 only, <laughs> P3 only. <laughs> but because P3 only, they learn in their happiest moment. They are the happiest in the class. You draw a model, they draw a model. We already lay the foundation to ensure that, you know, when more things, information is being added on to the problem sum, they know what to do with their basic model. Just add on, just move it around, and then they know what to do. And then from models, later they transit into Titeto, it becomes a smoother transition as well. Okay, and then we have another student. This student is very interesting. Yeah, he only did online class with me. And uh, there, yeah, only online class. And he did like super duper well with a lot of uh, parents support you know, alongside with me as well. Of course, there are some good 
days, some not so good days, you know. Not all, not all good children are like always consistently scoring 90, okay. There are some days where they get a bit tired, you know, like the P5s. First exam in a uh, little test in March, oh, they did very well. Then by May, right, they find that they got no stamina because too much work and then their stamina drop a little bit. And then later in uh, the WA3, they pick up a little bit and then final year exam, boom, they do very, very well. <laughs> and then you can see this cycle happening in P6 again. So consistency is extremely important to help the children build confidence, okay? Yeah, we also have students uh, who, this, this particular kid joins me only for online class. Yeah, um, and not that she comes physically to attend. She's uh, so busy. She only has time to uh, watch my video recordings over the weekend. And that already helped her to build up confidence in solving heuristics problem sum. Yeah, so, you know, I know about buying assessment books and things like that, but I think it makes a lot of difference if there's a voice behind the book. Like you see how teacher Fabian says, you know, why the numerator is made the same and why in the second example, the denominator made the same. If I had printed all these things for you to look through before the webinar, you probably go like, why the answer like that? I don't understand. Of course, you will not understand. You need a voice behind it to make it a lot more meaningful. Parents, if you're still not aware of the AL system, I was really shocked. Okay, I'm, I'm really surprised because I've spoken to some parents at uh, our Chochukang opening. There are some parents who raise their hand and say, oh, they didn't know AL system looks like this. They heard about it, but they didn't know what it means and how it can affect their kids, all right? So the AL system, um, read, read out a bit more. You can see that um, AL 6, 45 to 64 marks, it is a 20, uh, 20 mark range, okay? So when you say, I need my child to pass math, pass math is 50, but you're still at AL 6. So in order to move off to the next AL grade, you will need to you know, work a little harder to attain from 50 to have another 15 marks to 65. So this will guarantee your AL5. A lot, a lot of hard work put in. And how to get into Express Stream or Normal Acad Stream, this is the point range with all the subjects add together, okay? You can find these information easily on the internet. Just go and Google them, uh, AL, PSLE, you know, everything will just pop up. The best, best, most reliable one, SEAB website. All right, SEAB website, Singapore Examination Assessment Board, okay? And these are the exam dates, my P6 kids, do you know? Parents, do you know? Have you logged into your calendar? All right, oral is on a Tuesday, Wednesday. Strangely, right, this year, not on a Friday. It used to be like a Thursday, Friday. Now it's like midweek, Tuesday, Wednesday. So parents, you might want to take leave, huh? Already plan your leave, okay? Don't don't utilize all, okay? So you might want to take leave on Monday and Tuesday. Uh, Wednesday, no need. Uh, just send them to school, okay? <laughs> all right? And uh, we have lots and lots of programs at Blue Tree to support your child's learning from regular class to holiday program, which will be coming up in September and October. October is for the P5, uh, P4 and P3. We also have PSRE prep course, all right? You can always email us to ask for more information. We have um, bridging lessons like end of the year as well, okay? Yeah, like a lot, a lot of programs uh, available to support different types of children. This is another program that's happening. It's like, <laughs> so I can say, yes, I know. Okay, why we have so many programs? Um, because some parents say, well, you got so many. I, I, I'm so confused. Don't be confused, okay? If you're with us regular, that means weekly you see us, all right? You're, you're quite safe because we cover both paper one and paper two. And we um, keep in check that you have learned, your child has learned all the topics to be ready for um, the needed exams, all right? But if you are with us and not with us and you're looking for something like a crash course and this is for you, the PSLE Masterclass, yeah, it consolidates, you put things together. So uh, uh, example, I will choose like uh, two or three topics that is scariest to the kids and the parents. Why to the parents? Because the parents don't know how to solve, right? The parents don't know how to explain to the kids, right? They know how to do with algebra, but they do not know how to tell the children. Then say, teacher Fabian's titeto. Uh, yeah, I don't know how to take that all. You just go and watch the webinar better. Go and attend uh, Blue Tree lesson better. Yeah, but don't worry. We always have videos to support your learning. So take, uh, take down these dates, uh, 24th August and 25th August. 
commit to it 7 30 to 9 we will send you the lesson material before it so that your child can actually have a look at it and attempt some questions all right before the session and when you enter the session uh, this is a different form of learning we call it pre-learning yeah that means you prepare before you come to class you come into class with the full expectation of like what the notes i'm going to do i'm, I'm going to take down what is the second method a teacher is teaching uh, why is a method shorter than mine you know and things like that okay oh i made a careless mistake how can i avoid making this, these careless mistakes okay this class is only for primary six thank you very much uh, because it says psle can p5 attend mm. Can ah, but a bit stressful, right? <laughs> They're like P6 topics. But if parents you want to uh push your child or if you're in GP, yes, uh, I welcome you. But you must bear in mind, I mean, if you are coming for the full experience, what P6 feels like, of course I welcome you. Parents can sit with the children, yes, you're at home watching a webinar, sit next to your child, take notes together, go ahead. We welcome that. We totally welcome that. Akong uh, mom, uh, mommy, daddy, everybody sit together, okay? Become a night conference. <laughs> night conference with teacher babe. <laughs> all right so uh we are going to have the august and september uh last lab and then we are yeah we, we're going to cap the number of students so uh, that's like 45 students and we will not accept any more um uh when, once we hit our enrollment okay yeah because it's not like uh we want the children to really um you know, benefit from it. They can interact. They can also uh, type in the chat, teacher, I don't understand this part. Could you explain why you divide by two? They can interact, okay? But we will also uh, take note of the timing. Yeah, because if one question, we take more than 20 minutes to discuss, then it's not fair to the rest of the people in the group, right? Then they will have to overrun the whole show by two hours. <laughs> yeah, so there will be recording uh, sent to you guys so you can watch the recording over and over again and listen to my voice over and over again until PSR is over. <laughs> All right. Oh, this is the price. Wow, so good. Eh? <laughs> if you know your math, right? $85.60 times two. All right, we're looking at $170, but now it's less than $150. You can uh, lock in uh, two subjects. So you can go to our website and uh, quickly do your booking. And you can just like check out. Let me just bring you back to that page, okay? Oh yeah, it's on our website. Oh yeah, you can key in 96160312. Okay, my uh, sales team will get in touch with you. We'll give you the link and speak to you more about this. All right, if you're not following us yet, please join our Facebook discussion group, math group, science group. We also have a secondary uh, group as well. Okay, uh, we are on Telegram, Instagram, <laughs> Facebook gram. <laughs> what other gram do we have? Yeah, so we are very active in all various uh, social media platform. Yeah, our TikTok as well. <laughs> yeah, join us or join us. You can also share with your friends. I do have a lot of parents who just um, just follow us and, you know, and uh, did not enroll due to various reasons. But you follow us, I'm sure it's because you're benefiting from it. So um, keep sharing with your friends, your, you know, your chat groups and whatever. So yeah, we will always have free webinars um, to benefit everybody. Oh, go to our YouTube channel. Yes, click the like button. Ding, ding, ding. Then you will get notifications when we upload a new video. Okay, so you have teaching videos in there. There are also exam tips inside. And then you can find like uh, science teaching videos, math teaching videos. You can click, uh, like look for PSLE questions or area perimeter questions and all these things will pop up. Okay, all those very popular, like always being tested questions and concepts right yeah i've done those videos and upload in our youtube channel already just search blue three you're not gifted never mind then learn ah. learn together 